Sally up, a green Sally down. Last gun start got a tail to crown. Green Sally up, a green Sally down. Last gun start got a tail to crown. Green Sally up, a green Sally down. Last gun start got a tail to crown. Green Sally up, a green Sally down. Last gun start got a tail to crown. Green Sally up, a green Sally down. Welcome to One Shot Presents, I am Brick. And yes, I have stolen a car. Why have I stolen a car? Because my wife took my car without my permission. And so I've stolen her car. I just hope she doesn't find out. Anyway, I'm off to night flight to meet Tiger so I can pick up my comics. Speaking of comics, for this week's comic book review, I've chosen Elephant Men, War Toys, Volume 1, No Surrender, by Richard Starkings and art by Moritai. Now this is a cool read. What it's about is about this company that's taking over the world what they did was they created these mutants out of zebras, elephants, and hippos, or any zoo animal that you can think of. In the meantime, there's a small human resistance that's trying to stop them from taking over the world. Now, let me kiss Richard Starkings' ass for a little bit. He's a hell of a writer. You can totally tell that he's done his research on World War I, World War II. It totally reminded me of the history books that I've read about the Nazis invading Poland and France, and how there was a French resistance that was trying to stop them. It's a cool read. Another, another thing that I really like about it is Moritat's art. It's really sleek and clean. It's in black and white, which everybody knows that Tiger really likes the black and white art. And it kind of reminds me of the tabletop games I used to play when I was a kid. Moritat, great art. Anyway, out of five, I'm going to give it a four. When the sounds of your people in a white truck up and on a road bus one into a tree stump. Now, while we were at Comic-Con, we had the pleasure of meeting Richard Starkey. So here's Tiger talking to Richard Starkey. We're here with Richard Starkings. He's the creator of Elephant Men. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how, uh, where you came up with the idea for Elephant Men? Well, Elephant Men is really a spin-off of a book called Hip Flask, and Hip Flask uh, I created, um, I'm best known for my work as a lettering artist, and we were selling comic book fonts, and we needed a character to uh, promote the fonts, and rather than pay an absurd license fee to someone else, we decided that uh, we would create a character, and I came up with the character of Hip Flask, who was half human, half hippo. And um, cut a long story short, you know, once you have a character, you start to think, well, how did he become half human, half hippo? And uh, the Elf Men story is uh, really, it's the kind of story I would like to see, which is a science fiction story. It's dark, it's dystopian, uh, it's also a little bit funny. It's got three cute girls, it's got three deeply misunderstood male leads who are, uh, one's an elephant man, one's a hippo man, one's a rhino man, but uh, hopefully it's so much more than that. It is really the comic book that I wanted to write, and uh, I grew up on books like um, 2000 AD and Heavy Metal, so it's the kind of book that if I'd been asked to create a series for 2000 AD, which is a British weekly comic that, from which came Judge Dredd and Strontium Dog and other great characters like that, then Elephant Men would be the kind of book, kind of story that I would contribute to that kind of science fiction comic book. All right, so one more question. It's coming from across the pond then. Uh, what were some of the, I guess, American influences that some of our viewers might be more familiar with that maybe inspired you as a kid or that inspired you to this day? Sure. I loved the Fantastic Four. I loved the early 60s Marvel comics, which were very much rooted in science fiction. Really, the Hulk is a science fiction story. It's about a guy 
who's exposed to dangerous radiation. Same with Spider-Man, same with Fantastic Four. It's sort of what was haunting all Americans in the 60s was the threat of radiation. And of course, it's a science fiction extrapolation of that. And I love the Fantastic Four because I always thought the Fantastic Four was about ideas rather than uh, villains and monsters. Uh, but having said that, my favorite issue of the Fantastic Four was a, a story that centered around the thing called This Man, This Monster. And really, at the heart of the story of the thing is Ben Grimm wants to be human again. Well, Hip Flask is similar to the thing in many ways, but he can't be human again. So he has to discover his, hum his humanity as a monster, if you like. So Fantastic Four was quite a, a big influence on that. I used to love reading that as a kid. So. Excellent. Well, thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. We appreciate it. Thank Take you. care. All right, this isn't really a review, but I just want to show you cats, something I picked up at the San Diego Comic-Con. It was a print done by David Mack. I picked it up at his booth. Um, I'm a huge Daredevil fan. I collected all the Bendis issues that you know David Mack did the covers for. So this is pretty cool. This guy's a great artist. You need to check out some of his work with Kabuki and Daredevil. But uh, we also did an interview with him, and I wanted to just show you guys that right now. We're here with one of the most distinctive artists in comics today, David Mack. David, thanks for being on the show. Tell us a little bit about Kabuki. Uh, it's a book I write and draw, and I've been working on it for about 15 years now. Uh, the newest series is called The Alchemy. It's at Marvel Comics. Um, we started a new creator at Marvel called Icon. We started uh, Kabuki and Powers, and now Criminal from Brubaker is there also. But uh, yeah, The Alchemy is, uh, is the newest stuff, and I've got six volumes collected before that in, in hardcover. And it's available at local comic book stores? Yeah, uh, yeah. check with your comic store. Um, any of your local shops should have it. If they don't, they can reorder it. All the paperbacks and hardcovers are in stock, so they can order those. They can even reorder uh, the Marvel issues if they're out of them. And we have a hardcover collection of the Alchemy from Marvel. It should ship in about a month or two. Right on. You guys need to check out this guy's work. It's very beautiful. One of the cool things about One Shot Presents is that we get to meet interesting people. While we were at Seattle, we met Miriam Lubicki who wrote Jobnik. It was a comic book that we reviewed on our show. Well, while we were in San Diego, we ran into Miriam, so here's Tiger talking to Miriam. We're here with one of our favorite guests again, Miriam Lubicki. Miriam, you want to tell us a little bit about the new edition of Jobnik? Um, well, I've been working on the hand lettering. I'm replacing all the computer lettering with hand lettering because it matches the art style better. Um, and so this is the new edition with the, this is the final cover of the book. Um, it's a wraparound cover with, you know, the abyss of stars. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm pleased with how it came out. I got some quotes from some comic-y friends, uh, including R. Crumb wrote a quote for me, which I'm very proud of. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been getting, you know, reviewed here and there, and uh, I hope that it's just going to keep getting bigger. Right on. Well, thank you. We always appreciate having you on the show and wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Well, that's our show for the week. Tune in next week. Man, cops. See you guys next week.